This guide shows you how to format an external hard drive, USB pen drive or USB drive to FAT32. This can be handy if you're putting the drive into a device that does not support the common Windows NTFS file system. Please be aware before following this drive, please ensure you have a backup copy of any important files on your computer or on the external device that you're planning to convert into a FAT32 device. It may be necessary to wipe the external device to make it a FAT32 drive. Please also be aware I can take no responsibility for any data lost following this procedure. If you're not sure what you're doing, please do stop following this guide immediately and seek professional guidance. Before we begin, we need to identify the drive letters or letter of the external device that we wish to format to FAT32. To do this, we need to make sure at this stage that the device is unplugged. Then, we need to open up File Explorer or computer, or my computer if you're using Windows XP, under Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1 and Windows 10, we can click on the yellow folder that's at the bottom of the screen to open File Explorer. Then we click this PC on the left hand side. If you're using Windows XP, Windows Vista or Windows 7, you can click on the Start button and then click either My Computer or Computer from the Start menu. Next thing we need to do is we need to plug in our external drive. Whilst we're doing this, we need to keep an eye on the screen as we need to see what actually appears on screen. As you can see, in my case, I've got a Recovery E drive and an OSF drive appear on my computer. Please make a note of this drive. On most drives that you plug in, you'll only have one drive letter appear. Mine, my hard drive is partitioned into two separate partitions, so therefore that's the reason why I've got a Recovery E and OSF drive. So next thing we need to do is we need to download a, a program from the internet. So we go into our internet browser. This could be Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge, Google Chrome, Mozilla Firefox, whatever your preference. So we go into, I'm going to go into Internet Explorer. Okay. And we're going to go to a website and we need to type in www. This is at the top of the screen, by the way, in the, uh, in, in, in the box at the top. Macrorit.com. That's M A C R O R I T.com. I press enter or return, or I can click on the arrow just to the right of the address. The website now appears. We need to click download. And then we need to look for the free edition, which is just at the top there. And we want to download the portable edition. So I left click portable edition. It will then ask, what do you want to do with mde-free-portable.zip? So I want to save as, so I click save as. And I want to save it in the downloads folder. So I click downloads there and then click save. The file is now downloading, as you can see at the bottom of the screen. Once it's downloaded, left click open folder. If you're downloading from Google Chrome, you will notice a box appear down in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, mde-free-portable.zip. Once it's finished downloading, Click on the arrow next to the download and then click show in folder. If you're downloading from Firefox, it will ask you do you want to open or save. Click save file and then click OK. 
As you'll see, mde-free-portable.zip appears at the top of the screen. It tells you how many seconds remaining, a few in my case. When it's finished downloading, click on the folder just to the right there. If you're using Edge, a box will appear at the bottom of the screen saying how many percent of mde-free-portable.zip has been downloaded. When it's finished, <clears throat> click on open folder. So now, it doesn't matter which browser you use, you should be in the same place. You should be in the downloads folder where you'll see mde-free-portable. This is currently in a zip file, so we first need to unzip it. To do this, right click mde-free-portable, <clears throat> then move your mouse down to extract all and left click extract all. It will ask us to select a destination and extract files. So this is fine what it recommends. It'll extract it now into the downloads folder as a folder of its own. So left click extract. Okay, double click MDE-free. Double click DM. The screen may now darken and say, do you want to allow this app from an unknown publisher to make changes to your PC? So make sure the program name says dm.exe. The publisher is unknown and the file origin is downloaded from the internet. So left click, yes. Okay, so eventually when it's loaded, you should get a, a screen like this. So <clears throat> now we need to identify the actual disk or partition that you want to uh, convert to FAT32 or format as FAT32. So if you remember on my system, when I plugged the disk in, um, I had disk E and disk F. Now, obviously here, you've got to make sure that you're 100% confident that you're working with the right disk, because if you're not, you could end up wiping the wrong disk and um, losing a lot of information and your, your whole system, perhaps. So this is why I say you've got to be extremely careful and you've got to know exactly what you're doing. I must re-emphasize, I can take no responsibility for you losing any data from this video. So, uh, so if you're not sure what you're doing, then get somebody who does to, uh, to, to do it for you. Okay, so <clears throat> what I want to do is, is I've got my E drive here that um, I, I, I want to convert to FAT32. So I right click on the E drive, either down here or up here, and I get a menu come up. So one of the options in there is convert to FAT32. So I can left click, click convert to FAT32 and, uh, and, and that'll convert it. Now, sometimes though, like for instance, say if I wanted to convert my um, F drive to, uh, to FAT32, I right click on it, but there's no option there to convert it. Um, I'm presuming this is because the drive is too large to be converted to FAT32. So what we'd have to do is we'll have to wipe it and start again from scratch. So, but we'll come to that in a minute. So like I say, my E drive, I'm gonna convert that to FAT32. So I right click on the E drive and I go up to FAT32 and I left click FAT, convert to FAT32 and it's checking, preparing files and it's saying here, that there's certain files here that cannot be supported by FAT32 because the, um, <clears throat> the, the, the they're over the limit required for FAT32 or larger than the you know what, what FAT32 can support. So uh, I can say right, I'm going to ignore these these files, but these files probably won't work after. So um, you know if if the if the files that are saying they can't be supported by FAT32. Um, are coming up then this is the chance now you cancel this and copy the file to another drive 
um, so that uh, you can still continue using it from another drive. So, okay, so I'm not too worried about this particular file. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just gonna click ignore these files and click convert. It was saying, are you sure you want to ignore these files? If you do, these files will be lost after conversion. Well, I'm quite happy to lose this file, less there's no problem. So uh, I'm gonna click yes. But like I say, if you don't wanna lose this file, then don't continue at this stage. Copy the file off onto another computer or another external hard drive um, because you won't be able to use it on this drive um, after it's converted to FAT32. Okay, so I'll click, I'll left click yes. So, and it says the program will now convert this volume to FAT32. Click OK to start conversion now. So I left click OK, and uh, it's now, it, it popped up there saying trying to lock C drive. OK, so we then need to click on the green commit up the top there to apply the changes when, if we're happy. So I left click commit. And it says here, one operations is currently pending, apply the changes now. We strongly recommend that you close all other applications before you apply the pending changes. So I'm gonna click OK there. And here we go, it's now converting uh, that, that particular drive to FAT32 and it says one operations have been executed successfully. Now it's quite possible that um, your drive might take a lot longer to convert than, than this, it might be a lot quicker. Um, it just depends on the size of the of the drive. So, okay, so that's now FAT32. So I click on OK to get rid of this box. Okay then, so going back to my F drive now, this is the one where I right clicked on it and it didn't actually give me the option to convert the drive to FAT32. Um, now, what can we do about that? Now, with, with this drive, we have to, format it, which means wiping everything off of it. So again, <clears throat> in, in this instance, definitely make sure that you've got a copy of whatever's on that drive if you wanna keep it, because you're gonna lose it if, if you carry on uh, with this. So, uh, but normally here, what I would do is I would move my mouse down to format volume and left click format volume, okay? And it says here, the volume contains system files, maybe other operating system. Are you sure you want to format this volume? Well, yes, I'm okay, this is, this is fine. Um, in actual fact, the drive that I've got plugged into the computer is a drive that I've pulled out from an old computer that I no longer use. And I know it's got an operating system on there, but I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to, 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 to wipe that, so that's no problem. So it says, are you sure you want to format this volume? So yes, I left click yes. Okay, and here it uh, gives us a few details on the, on the, uh, the system. So uh, it's saying here the capacity of the drive. Uh, the file system at the moment is NTFS, but if I click on the little drop down box or the arrow pointing downwards there, I can select FAT32. So I left click FAT32. The cluster size I can leave alone, okay? And as long as I'm happy that I'm formatting the right drive, and I'm happy that there's nothing on that drive that I do wanna keep, I can now click OK. So I left click OK. And it's saying here, trying to lock volume F. Now, this may take a while um, because obviously this drive is quite a huge drive. I, I have selected quick format, so it may not take that long. Um, but if you find that uh, a quick format doesn't work, then, uh, then take the tick out of quick format in the previous step and try again. So here we go. So it's, it's now said here, yeah, FAT32 up there. And what we need to do is, and this is a very important step, we need to click on the commit tick to apply the changes. Because at the moment it hasn't actually made the changes. It's made all the checks, I suppose, to see if it can make the changes. So we now need to commit and, uh, and make the changes. So I left click the green tick at the top and it says here, one operation is currently pending, apply the changes now. We strongly recommend you close all other applications before you apply the pending changes. So yeah, I'm okay to continue. So I click okay, that's left click okay. <clears throat> and it's now making the changes. So like I say, this could take a while because um, it's a, a, a large hard drive. It may be very quick because I've only asked for a quick format yet yeah, and it was quite quick. So one operations have been ex ex executed successfully. So I left click OK there. And there we go. 
the drive the drives the e drive is now fat 32 and the f drive is now fat 32 and that's it you should now be able to put the drive whether it be an external hard drive or a pen drive or a usb drive into um, a, a system that perhaps doesn't support ntfs such as a playstation 3 a uh, a, a television a, a video box or something like that um, uh, but uh, yeah there you go that's how you do it